This is the JP News, now in HD. Tonight's features, Brothers in Arms, The Leaf Shark, The Clogged Waterline, and from April 2012, Hoodie Rally for Trayvon Martin. Here comes the Leaf Shark. Look at those teeth. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you like the publicity? And the uh, Green Wave Lawn and Landscaping is now assembling the top piece of the, of the leaf shark. And Jammed. There, there they go. Wow. Big, huh? Yeah, colorful. Very colorful. Good evening, Schenectady. This is a JP News exclusive. Tonight we are doing an interview with a band from Great Britain called Brothers in Arms. And if we start down here from uh, my right and work left, uh, I'll let you gentlemen all introduce yourselves. Yep, uh, I'm MC Flames Us. Um, I'm performing with a band called Brothers in Arms. I'm from London and I flew over here to perform, so yeah. Yep, I'm Flamesy from Great Britain, age 24 years old. And yeah, I'm representing a crew called Brothers in Arms. I'm uh, DJ LJ, um, I'm 36, also from London. Unfortunately, we've got another two members of the band that ain't here today. Another DJ called DJ Dubs D, and another MC called MC Pikes MC. So, fortunately, couldn't make it today, but yeah, five okay. of us in total. So, tell us, gentlemen, uh, what kind of music do you perform? Well, it's, um, we're from the UK, we do uh, UK house, garage, grime, hip hop, do a whole genre of music. Really. Yeah, basically, we cover every angle of like the underground scene all the way up to the commercial scene. So, the thing so it depends where we're playing and what gigs that we, we're going to be doing. So it, it, would you call it modern Great Britain music or? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the underground scene. Yes, yes, okay. yes, underground. Yes, Are there any yeah. similarities to retro things like the anybody from the uh, English Invasion, the Beatles or? No, it's kind of like, um, how can we put it? Uh, I think that's more, that comes under more like pop sort of music, going on to rock and okay. stuff like that. But Basically when we go to a club, I, like, we'll, we'll play the beats and these guys will do a bit of MC. Yeah, I'd say it's dance music. Dance music, really. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's dance music, that's what I'd I don't say. know if there's the equivalent of anyone in the US that do what we do over here as yet. This is what we're free to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so gentlemen, um, how big is your fan base? Yeah, um, well, we think we've got um, on Reverb Nation forward slash uh, Team Dirt, hashtag Team Dirty. We've only just recently joined that. It's about, we're third, or I believe, and it's roughly about 300 fans on there. On Facebook, Twitter, etc. Um, I don't know, what do you yeah, think? I think, I think with all YouTube views on Twitter and stuff, I think all in all, you, you're, you're in the thousands, obviously. Yeah. I've been doing this a long time, 10 years, so I've always had a strong fan base following me. Oh, wow, so you started when you were 14. Yeah, I started wow. when I was young. Oh, yeah. But obviously, them followers have followed me all through when I was a kid, all up to now, sort of thing, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, yeah. Yes. And then obviously, I brought my brother through on the music, and his listeners come in and yeah. it's, it's just built, it's expanding. Yeah. Obviously with the other two, like the other DJ and the other MC like Pikes and, and Dubs, obviously we've got their fan base as well, so we're not hitting the millions yet, but we're working on it. Yeah. So, um, it's gradually yeah, getting there, it's getting there. So. Considering the whole team's only been together for like a year, a year. Yeah. we've got a few thousand, three, maybe four, so it's really, really kicking off at the moment, especially after uh, his track come out last year, which uh, we can talk about later if you like. Yeah. <laughs> sure, okay, all right. Brilliant. So you gentlemen uh, flew here for some New York gigs. Um, tell me about uh, Alice. Yeah, Alice was a it was a good experience. 
fantastic. It was a uh, like made welcome. Yeah, it's a bit nerve wracking yeah. at first, obviously. Coming out to when we was up there, we was talking to the other DJs and stuff, sort of thing, and they was like, "You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right." Obviously, we've come a long way to performing, to perform in front of a crowd that ain't from where we normally perform, yeah. it's a bit nerve-wracking. It was a great yeah. atmosphere though. Yeah, it was good, yeah. yeah. Great atmosphere. And we had a good like turnout, it was like quite busy in there. We had people come up to us, taking videos of us, yeah. taking pictures of us and stuff. And do you know, it just gave us that boost on the stage to just get in. Like, come on, I don't dance. Like, well, I was, I was <laughs> dancing on that stage, do you know what I mean? Lots of girls, there were a lot of uh, girls talking. There was a lot of booty shaking going on. Yeah, there was some shaking and dancing yeah. going on. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of that, and like it weren't just the younger generation that was there getting involved. You had older, older people there. You had younger people. Yeah, you had couples. No, you know I mean, it, it was well. just it was it a good well. vibe throughout the whole night, if I'm honest. So yeah, yeah it went well. It definitely went well. It's quite nerve wracking for me because we was playing some music from the UK that no one had ever heard here before. But thank God it went down well. So yeah. uh, yes, it's good. London to New York, London I to think. New York. That's yeah. <laughs> How did Olives compare to similar, uh, similar London venues? So, um, yeah, well, it's a bit different, obviously, because it's London, New York, but <clears throat> the club went well over here. I'd compare it the same genre, really, same music, whatnot. Yeah, it, it is the same, but like in a different way. It the experience is better in Olives because obviously in London it's to us, it's a regular thing. It's our work. Like mm. We go there, we get paid to do that. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, it's the same thing for us over in London. So to fly out however many thousand miles it is to a different country and have the crowd respond to us like they would I back at home, it, yeah. it's a more of a buzz. It's more of an excitement. Mm. If you can understand mm. what I mean. But yeah, no, I'd say it's better. It was. It's a better experience in Olives than what it is at home. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, that no, was. It was. It was a good experience. It was good. I mean, for me, it was quite nerve wracking because I usually you know, use the turntables or CDJs. This time, it's used a laptop. Yeah, it's so crazy it, setup. It was a bit. Here. It was the first time for me, but we got used to it and we had the same reaction. Obviously, the club in London we do were a little bit bigger than what we did here, but the atmosphere and because we were over it made it better in a way. Yeah. You know? So mm. I mean, it was great. Great. Couldn't ask for any more, really. So, gentlemen, will we be seeing you here in the States? Well, but yeah, we're hoping to come back. Hopefully looking to get some more bookings next year. Yeah, all depending on our manager, Heather. Yeah. If, obviously, she I can have. work some more magic. And good old Heather. Us, yeah, yeah, good old Heather. If yeah. she could get us some more gigs over here, we'll yeah. be more than happy to, to fly back. back. Hopefully to come back out, though. It's been yeah. a great experience. So. It's been fantastic. Yeah, it has been, it has been really good. So, so gentlemen, how did you like the DJs here to play with compared to back home? Okay. Yeah, the DJs were, uh, were just like the UK, really. I, I was quite impressed. They were really good. They were playing uh, the, the genre of house that we like. And uh, yeah, it was, it was no different. Every DJ is different in their own right. But um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was really good. Really, really good. For you, it was a bit more nerve wracking because you didn't have your psychic with you, did you? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's but normally two crime. DJs. There's normally two of them. And obviously, the three. MCs. Well, Dubs is more of a technician, and without him, we, I was pretty lost. Yeah. <laughs> but we got there in the end. But yeah, no, apart from having that little hit at the beginning, the whole set went well. And I've done a bit of back to back with uh, one of the other DJs and that, with mixing four tunes. <laughs> so yeah. it's pretty good. It's pretty good, yeah. You learned saying as well, didn't you? Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, time, yeah. So. so you take your own decks now. <laughs> yeah. no, no, it, was, it, was, it was a real good experience. I really enjoyed it. And I can't wait to come out next year. So yeah, I mean, yeah, fantastic. Uh, so guys, what's on the um, the schedule coming up? Well, we've got uh, we've got a few events coming up when we get back home. Uh, next weekend we're performing. The weekend after that, I believe we're performing. Yeah, I think we I think we're fully booked up now till, till New Year's, Year's Eve. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think. And obviously we've got the the mixtape going on, which um, yeah, we've got a mix, we're working there. on a mixtape. Basically, it's um it's all genres of music from like hip hop, rap, grime, UK garage. It covers everything really. We've got singers on there. It, it's it, basically that's going to be out by next summer, isn't it? All yeah, stuff. But that's called London to New York. See, I told you. That's what the mixtape's called. And there's a lot of artists on there. There's some big names featuring on there. Especially so, from the UK, and that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Joe, we've got a big following for it at the minute. Like everyone's getting crazy about it at the minute. And obviously about mm -hmm. Empire FM. 
dot net. You can catch us on that every Saturday. Five till seven Eastern Standard Time, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. yeah. And you can catch all of us on there. Like, okay. obviously, myself, Flamesy, Flames Us, LJ, and the other two, which is Dubs D and Pikes MC. So, yeah, I hope, obviously, whoever watches this. I hope you'll come back next year yeah. as well, don't forget. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll be back here. Welcome right. back to the, uh, the US. Well, we've got to. Yeah. Our yeah. mixtape's got just New York's main minute. Give us so the next year's schedule. <laughs> we're looking to just blow up everywhere okay. on both sides yeah well i want to say that uh gentlemen it's been a, a pleasure to know all of you <laughs> thank you cheers um, thank you thank you if you haven't made it big uh, i hope you do make it big because i will always have this video of you gentlemen yeah, while, while you were young yeah we'll have to come back for round two <laughs> okay this has been the jp news with a exclusive edition interview with the brothers in arms Good morning, everybody. This is the Jess Petroquin Camcorder News. Uh, today, I think, is December, I don't know, 14th, 15th, something like that. And we have gotten our first snowfall of the season. It's almost Christmas time, so maybe this has put some people in a good mood. But anyway, I'm filming the scenes around here. Uh, people are out shoveling. Uh, I just did my shoveling. I did not exactly enjoy it. My back will probably hurt, as it always does every time I shovel. My car is free. I shoveled away the snow bank, but it's only going to be probably put back by the city plow. But that's a fact of life. They have to do their job. Uh, speaking of which, here comes the city plow. Okay, this is the Jess Petroquin camcorder news and I am having plumbing problems at my house. This is a 200 foot line called a jet that is going down into the um, uh, drain pipe of my basement to try to find a clog. And uh, so now I'm not too happy because they've got this thing pulled way out 200 feet out into the street, probably leads across the street to the other guy's house. Now it's moving by itself. No idea what it's doing. Okay, now for the first time I can get a really good view of that pipe here, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Man. I'm going to go outside and uh, take a look and turn this thing out, see if I can hear sure, it. Sure, yeah. Oh, this is not in here. Turn it on, see if you can hear it. Uh, any cars coming? Yes. Oh, hold on, give me that thing. Hold on. There's gonna be a big hey! Whoa! Whoa! Come on! What flashlight, bro? Got a sewer emergency here, man. You don't want to drive like a freaking maniac to get where you want to go. Have a good day. What did you find out? I hear it in there. You you could hear it down there? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, wow. Okay. That's a long... I mean, which way does it go? I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it in a little further. Oh, okay, yeah. That's not deep enough. I'm telling you, I heard it in here. That's not deep enough. Well, is that all shit down there? I heard it in here. Is that a big pile of turd there? No, no. this is the right. That's it, huh? Wow. That's the jet hose. Yep. That wow. Is, I've never seen anything like that. No, 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 no. Or he comes down. <laughs> Good evening, this is the Jess Petroquin Camcorder News, and we are at the corner of Hewlett and Albany Street, where there is going to be a hoodie march in honor of Trayvon Martin, who was gunned down in Florida by a neighborhood watchman. 
No justice, no peace. 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 Yeah. 
Justice for Trayvon, come on. That's it. Justice for Trayvon. 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 Many of you know what happened on February 26th when Rayhorn was coming uh, from a store. He was on his way back home. He was at his father's house in which he was watching the uh, NBA All-Star game. He left out to go and got some Skittles. Who got their Skittles? Let me see your Skittles. Skittle time. His Skittles and some iced tea. And then he was followed by uh, Greg uh, George Zimmerman, and who had watched him and followed him, and said that he was suspicious. And that's one of the reasons that sometimes those who seem to be racist try to use against us, who have uh, who are people of color, and saying that we look suspicious. Well, you look suspicious. That's what they say. That's one of the things he was accused of looking suspicious. So we don't care, it have, doesn't have nothing to do with the way a person looks. You can't judge a person's character by the way they look. In other words, Martin Luther King says he's looking for the day that we'll be judged by the context of our character. Is that right? Yes. So I believe that we ought to raise the bar and say enough, enough. This is a new day and a new generation. Is that right? That's right. I mean, if that's okay for you to be racial profiled, then that's on you, but I won't stand for it. I won't put up with it. And you shouldn't either. And the Rayvon and the Ray, uh, Rayvon family, Trayvon's family, doesn't want to put up with it. Uh, we're here in solidarity to support uh, Trayvon and his, his his family and what has happened across the United States. People are, are fed up and they want justice for a guy who said he had a bloody nose and that he had his head was smashed into the ground. Well, as many of you may have seen the news, they didn't see any blood and no marks on his head. How important it is, listen, if this guy gets away with this murder, what's going to happen across the country? The same thing. What's going to happen in Schenectady? The same thing. They're going to try to pass a bill where you can, uh, I believe it's called Stand for Your Rights or Stand Your Ground. Under the Stand Your Ground bill in Florida, this, they, they're hiding behind that bill. But I believe it's more than that. He, maybe he got a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, an uncle, a cousin, or somebody in law enforcement holding up for him. Uh-huh. Father was a judge. Huh? So as we in Schenectady and across the nation stand up, we're going to say, listen, we don't want that Stand Your Ground law to happen here. Imagine if there was a Stand Your Ground law in Hamilton Hill, in Mount Pleasant, in New York City. Well, it could be your son, could be your daughter. So we're standing against that today in solidarity 
and, and more so in Schenectady, particularly in the African American young men and women uh, in this community, the fact that you get some, I have spoken with some young men who have said they have a racial profile and they're tired of it. Just because they're walking around or just because they happen to have on the hood or just because they're black or they're Spanish, just because they're standing in the crowd. You know, they kind of, we got this kind of thing when we go to certain places, black people say to each other, don't get in the crowd, don't get in the crowd. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't say that like you know what I'm talking about because it's this, this false idea, uh, this a facade, a false idea that if we're in a crowd, we're doing something. Oh, let me talk to the air. Listen, y'all y'all know that's right? Or did I let the secret out? That, that's the truth. That is, that is after absolute truth. But just because black people, Spanish people, people of color are standing in the crowd, especially these guys who are 15 and 18 and 14 and 13, that doesn't mean that they're up to no good. I was over in Mount Pleasant the other day, there was three guys, and they walked past the store, and the store got the guy came to his window, and he started waving them. They, they had either, they didn't done nothing. He started waving them off. Now, if he looked, they looked at them, at him, and said, "Listen, it's just trying to talk to him and tell him we're not doing anything." He would have called the cops. You know what the cops would have did? You think they said something to the store owner? No. They said something to those three guys that I watched and I saw. So what they've done is they've taken a uh, 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 Ravon. Uh, uh, Trayvon, they took the Trayvon Martin and they hit the victim. It's the T, it's the T, it's the T. They, they take the Trayvon and they have, uh, they have made him the victim. They, they're saying that it's his fault that he's dead. Why? Because he wore a hood? Because he's black in a gated community? It's his fault that he's dead? No, not at all. So we don't, we don't want racial profiling. We want to get rid of that. Isn't that right? Right. Say down, down with racial profile. Racial profile. Down, down with racial profile. Racial profile. And this concludes this edition with uh, the uh, hoodie rally for Trayvon Martin. And this is the Just Petroquin Camcorder News. I got aliens living in my basement and every day I'm thinking about coast to coast. I got children. I didn't know they were hybrids. <laughs> aliens came and that's the way it is. Every night I'm coast to coast. <laughs>